Hi, welcome to Fun Science with Rohini. The tell me why of today is why is sound produced when we clap our hands. Now, even when I'm holding my hands like this, there is air around the hands. You can feel it if you're standing in a, a wind or if you're standing out on a day where there is lots of breeze. You can feel the air around your hands. Even now, we can feel the air around the hands. Now, what happens when we move the hands close together is the air is being displaced all around. The air is moving all around and it is being compressed between my hands also. The air is being compressed between the hands. Now, when we clap, this air is compressed and then suddenly caught as a uh, caught trapped between the hands. When it is trapped between the hands, this uh, air starts traveling out because once we put the hands together, there is very little space for the air to occupy. It starts traveling out. Now, this travels in the form of waves like sound. Sound travels in the form of waves. We are compressing the air between our hands. We are pressing the air between our hands and we are squeezing it. And the squeezed air travels out all around and it also travels to the ears, to the sound, uh, uh, to the auditory organs or to the ears which capture the sound. Now the air that is squished and that has come out of the hands will flow in the form of waves. Sound also travels in the form of waves and when these waves reach the ear, they hit your eardrum and then the eardrum takes it to the brain and interprets it as sound. That is as simple as that. When you clap your hands, sound comes because air is compressed and the compressed air, the squeezed out air travels in the form of waves which finally reach your ear. And then inside the ear, the eardrum captures the waves, sends them to the brain and interprets them as sound. That's it. It's as simple as that. Now I'll tell you one bias. When do we clap? We clap when we are happy, when we are appreciating others and uh, when we are positive. So I would like to tell you about a bias called optimism bias. This optimism bias, uh, we tend to uh, have an optimism bias when we are predicting the future events to be much more positive, to contain much more positivity than what we have right now. Somebody asks you, uh, what do you want to be 10 years from now? Or how do you perceive your life 10 years from now? You might say that from 10 years from now, I will be doing this, I will be doing that, I'll have my favorite job, I'll be into good relationship. You tend to overestimate the positive events in your life when somebody asks you to predict the future because you perceive the future to be nice. This can be seen when you ask a child what they want to become when they grow up and what they want to have when they grow up. They say, when I grow up, I'm going to have a big job which pays a lot of money and I'm going to have a big house and a nice car as good as a Rolls Royce or a Volvo or something like that. And that is optimism bias. That means you tend to perceive that there will be more positive events happening to you in future. Now, the opposite of this is pessimism bias. You expect the future to be darker than what it actually is. That means you expect the future to be um, low, uh, wherein you expect to feel low, a little depressed and a little anxious and you think things may not work out for you. Uh, probably you have an exam tomorrow and somebody asks you, so how do you think you'll fare tomorrow? You'll say, I don't think I will fare well at all. But in fact, you could fare well. In fact, the reality could be you must be doing very well. But then you feel that future, uh, even tomorrow is future. Future doesn't hold such positive events for you and the events could be a little negative. That's called pessimism bias. Optimism bias, a classic example, childhood dreams of everybody and childhood ambitions. So, happy dreaming. Thank you.